Anarchism was an influential contributor to the social politics of Brazil's Old Republic. During the epoch of mass migrations of European laborers at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, anarchist ideas started to spread, particularly amongst the country's labor movement. Along with the labor migrants, many Italian, Spanish, Portuguese and German political exiles arrived, many holding anarchist or anarcho-syndicalist ideas. Some did not come as exiles but rather as a type of political entrepreneur, including Giovanni Rossi, who founded an anarchist commune in 1889, named the Colony of Sicilia, in the interior of Piranha State. The experiment only lasted a few years, but at one point consisted of 200 participants, mostly Italian migrants with urban labor backgrounds who had difficulties learning to work the land. Anarcho-syndicalist labor movement, press and schools Along with European immigrants in the 19th and early 20th centuries came their anarchist ideas. These immigrants joined trade unions and supported anarcho-syndicalism by the 1920s, which led to labor reforms including increases in pay. Unions from Rio, São Paulo, and Porto Alegre united in the Brazilian Workers' Confederation Confederação Operária Brasileira, or COB, in 1908. As the result of a successful Workers' Congress, anarchism or anarcho-syndicalism was the dominant ideology underpinning the Brazilian labor movement at the beginning of the 20th century. Syndicates and labor federations were erected, mainly pressing for shorter workdays, better working conditions and higher salaries. Various strikes, i.e. in the harbor of Santos and among railway workers, were inspired by anarchist sympathies. In 1906 the first nationwide Brazilian Workers' Congress was held, and from then on the May Day celebrations, with prominent anarchists delivering speeches, started to attract large crowds. The second National Workers' Congress in 1913 was initially meant to be a Pan-American anarchist congress, but only two Argentinians showed up. The labor agitation eventually culminated in the large strike movements of 1917 and 1919, biggest in São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, but echoed throughout the country. Alongside the labor federations, anarchist daily and weekly newspapers were also issued. Additionally, educational centers, theaters, and elementary schools were founded. In the 19th century some of those newspapers were in Italian and a few were in Spanish and German, but at the turn of the century most were in Portuguese. A plebe was an important one, but there were many more, issued in virtually any state capital of Brazil. The educational centers, schools and theaters founded by anarchists helped to draw attention to the issue of illiteracy in Brazil. This was a point taken up by various other groups in society, such as social Christian movements, inspired by Catholic social teachings, and various politicians aiming for containment of the social question or for popular support. Topic. Repression, fragmentation and decline Anarchists, anarcho-syndicalists and socialists of various kinds were generally much less fragmented in Brazil than in, for example, Italy. However, the many pamphlets and essays in anarchist newspapers show that there were fierce debates about ideology and strategy between adherents of different schools. The mostly moderate socialists rejected strongly the position of the emerging social East Christians on strikes and labor unions, around 1900. Ongoing debate, especially on the necessity and danger of central organization, between anarchists, libertarians and syndicalists filled the labor-based newspapers. In 1922, some militants who had been active in anarchist circles founded the Brazilian Communist Party PCB, influenced by the, of by the success of the Russian Revolution of 1917 and by the feeling of failure, in appeal and unity, of the syndicalist workers' federations. Among them, Astrogilda Pereira, Octavia Brando, Bernardo Canelas, José Elias da Silva. Others, like José Oidesica and Edgar Lewinroth, stayed loyal to anarchist principles. The party was not recognized as communist by the Comintern, however, being accused of being a doctrinal mess, still retaining much anarcho-syndicalist influence. Repression of the anarchist movement, and of the labor movement in general, was very harsh. The violent police repression of strikes caused many casualties. Also, newspaper and union offices and even children's schools were burned down. Furthermore, anarchist agitators were regularly arrested, and, if not Brazilian-born, exiled. 
Under the government of Artur Bernard's even concentration camps and torture centers existed, of which the most infamous was Clevelandia, in Oyapok, at the border with French Guiana. While some argue that the anarchist movement had already lost out against the communists by the 1920s, others, like Edgar Rodriguez, maintain that the anarchist movement actually kept growing during most of the 1920s, until the repression by Bernard's. In any case, the military populist movement, known as Tenentismo eventually won out. The repression by the Vargas regime, along with the introduction of the Mussolini-inspired state-led union structure in the 1930s, proved the death knell of the Brazilian anarchist movement. Some traces of anarchism remained, notably the Anarchist Study Center in Rio de Janeiro led by Professor José Oidesica, which had to go underground after the 1964 military coup. In the 1970s a small anarchist newspaper existed in Bahia, called The Enemy of the King, Portuguese, O Inimigo do Rei, but the movement would never regain the strength it had at the beginning of the 20th century. In the 1990s, Especifismo influenced anarchism spread to Brazil under the influence of the Uruguayan Anarchist Federation Federación Anarquista Uruguaya, or FAO, and saw the creation of regional groups such as the Gaucha Anarchist Federation Federação Anarquista Gaucha, or FAG. In 2002 Especifismo influenced groups based in nine states would found the Forum of Organized Anarchism Forum do Anarquismo Organizado, or FAO, which in 2012 would become the Brazilian Anarchist Coordination Coordenacao Anarquista Brasileira, or CAB. References Further reading Dulles, John W. F. Anarchists and Communists in Brazil 1900–1935. Austin, University of Texas Press. p. 603. ISBN 0-292-74076-X. Maram, Sheldon Leslie, Anarquistas, Movimento Operario, Immigrants on Colonia Sicilia, see the article by Isabel Felici, in, Cadernos AEL There exists also a novel by that name by an anarchist author named Smith. On Anarchist Newspapers Ferreira, Maria Nazareth, A Imprensa Operaria no Brasil 1880-1920 Petropolis 1978, most anarchist newspaper issues can be found in the Arquivo Edgard Leuenroth in Campinas, but there are also exemplars in other Brazilian archives, in Milan and in the IISH in Amsterdam. There are collections of articles published in secondary literature on the Brazilian labor movement, notably, Hall, Michael and Pinheiro, PSA Class Operaria no Brasil 1889-1930. Carone, Edgar Movimento Operario 1877-1944 External links Complicidade, Anarchist News Portal. A History of the Anarchist Movement in Brazil by Edgar Rodriguez Biography of Rossi Giovanni Brazilian Bakunin, Anarchist Militant Domingos Passos Declaration by Brazilian Anarchists Against the World Social Forum Articles on Anarchism in Brazil at the Kate Sharpley Library Anarchism in Brazil Interview with the Federação Anarquista do Rio de Janeiro FARJ.